Hey everybody, it's Katarina from Doll of Desserts, and today is my birthday! Actually, it's on the 15th, so we're a few days early, but today is Thursday, today is recipe video day, so we are making my birthday cake. But we're not just making any old birthday cake. No, 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 no. We are making the ultimate of birthday cakes. We are veganizing and gluten freeifying. Is that even a word? The infamous Momofuku Milk Bar Confetti Birthday Cake. You're probably thinking right now, Momo what? They're a New York City based bakery that is known for its unique style as well as unorthodox methods of making the most delicious looking treats. So instead of visiting Momofuku, we've decided to bring Momofuku to my kitchen. And if you decide to make the recipe, your kitchen. This recipe is a bit more tricky than typical and uses some pretty unorthodox ingredients compared to what I typically use on this channel. But we're trying to have the Momofuku experience, so we're going to follow the recipe exactly as a directive, except for where I am substituting ingredients to ensure they are gluten-free, vegan, and inclusive. Our Cloud9 vanilla cake baking mix is incredibly helpful for this recipe because it takes away pretty much a whole entire portion and step, making it a lot easier for you to focus on the other layers of the cake. Because this cake has three layers. It has the actual cake, a cake crumb, which is totally different from the cake. I know, we'll see what happens. As well as, of course, the icing. Anyways, without further ado, let's bake this cake. So first, let's make the cake crumb. In my bowl here, I have brown sugar, white sugar, baking powder, sea salt, and an all-purpose gluten-free flour. You can use whatever white rice-based gluten-free flour that is most available to you. Today, I am using Bob's Red Mill 1 to 1 flour. We're gonna put all these ingredients in the bowl and we're going to mix it on low speed using the paddle attachment. Now that the ingredients have been combined, we're going to add in some grapeseed oil and clear vanilla extract and our sprinkles. Our clumps here are not as big as they should be and that's due to the fact that we're using a gluten-free flour. Um, if this is the case, then you're gonna wanna add more moisture so everything adheres together. I'm going to add some non-dairy milk to this to help make the crumbs adhere a bit more. Once we've moistened up our cake crumb as needed, we're going to Put it onto a parchment lined pan and we're going to bake it for approximately 20 minutes at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. While our cake crumbs are cooking, let's make the cake. I'm going to put into the mixing bowl some non-dairy butter and some shortening and I'm going to add in some white sugar as well as an extra half teaspoon of xanthan gum. We're adding in the extra xanthan gum to this recipe because we're actually baking the cake in this pan here which is not a cake pan and actually absorbs a little bit more moisture out of the cake than normal because this is, of course, gluten-free. So adding the extra xanthan gum is going to help retain some of that moisture and structure so when we're making our cake finally, it doesn't fall into a billion pieces. Once we're done creaming the sugar and the oils together, I actually stopped it halfway through and scraped the sides and then began creaming it again just to ensure it was nice and fluffy. We're going to add in this. This is a combination of non-dairy milk, apple cider vinegar, grapeseed oil, which again could be canola or sunflower oil, as well as some more of that nice clear vanilla extract. But all the wet ingredients have been combined on a medium high speed in this wonderful mixer until they're light and fluffy. It's time to add in our vanilla cake mix. We're gonna mix in our cake mix with the wet ingredients on low speed. And while doing so, we're going to slowly add in about two thirds of the amount of sprinkles that I've recommended in the description box where all of our recipes are housed. That is some tasty birthday cake right there. Pour our cake batter into a parchment lined pan. This is very important, it must be parchment lined or you're gonna have a very hard time getting this cake out of the pan no matter how grease proof it is. And we're gonna bake this cake at 350 degrees for approximately 30 to 35 minutes until it is soft, risen, and fluffy to the touch. And now for part three of this epic cake saga, we are going to make our frosting. Into my bowl, I'm going to add in my shortening and butter. And while that is creaming on high speed, I'm also going to add in my glucose and my clear vanilla extract once again. 
big surprise there. And once you've whipped up all your wet ingredients to become nice, light, and fluffy, we're going to add in our icing sugar, salt, and a tiny bit of baking powder and citric acid. Again, with the interesting ingredients. And we're gonna beat that on low speed until it's combined. This frosting has got a nice tart taste to it. From the citric acid, it's awesome. All right, we've come to that special moment now where we are going to put together this cake. Now, as you saw at the beginning of the video, this cake is not iced on the outside. So we're gonna stack it in a really interesting way to try and get that beautiful look. Now, the way that they do this at Momofuku is they actually use acetate, which is a clear see-through plastic paper to line the inside of a cake ring. Um, this is a very sturdy way of putting your cake together. I, on the other hand, am trying to do this with parchment paper. And the reason I'm doing that is because acetate paper is A, very expensive, and B, not accessible to everybody. So I'm hoping with parchment paper, this is going to be a good solution for you to make at home. In addition, the best way of keeping the parchment paper adhering to the inside of the cake ring is to actually wet the inside of the cake uh, tin very lightly, just a little bit of water. So let's assemble this cake. We're gonna start with this crumbly mess, which I am trying to not stack, snack on, and we're gonna put it and press it into the bottom of the pan to make our bottom layer. Once you've squished in that first layer of cake with the cake remnant, remnants, which you can make as thick or as thin as you want, we're going to pour on a bit of the vanilla milk soak. After you've poured on the, uh, well, after you've poured on the vanilla soak, we're gonna put a tiny bit of frosting, about one fifth of the frosting that you have. You see that you don't need to have too much frosting on there, which will be followed up by a layer of that vanilla cake crumb. You're gonna push the crumb right into the cake, throw a bit more icing right on top, and then after that, you're going to put the second layer of cake on. Follow the exact same steps, wash and repeat. You're gonna put on the soak, icing, crumbs, icing. Then you're going to place the final layer of cake right on the top. To finish off the cake, we're gonna put the remainder of the frosting nicely on the top, a little decoration of more cake crumb, and because we can never have too many sprinkles, some more sprinkles. Once your cake is complete, close up that parchment paper and put it into the freezer for up to 12 hours. So over 12 hours have elapsed and this cake is looking super fine. To take it out of the frozen cake pan, this is a bit tricky, but what I did is I put the actual metal pan into water. That is if you were using a metal cake pan rather than a cake ring. I put the metal pan into hot water just to basically let the metal expand. And then I put covered this with parchment paper, flipped the cake upside down, and it came out perfectly. So while the cake is frozen, it's really easy to handle and will make an awesome transition onto a beautiful serving plate which we will now be eating. Thank you so much for tuning in to learn how to make this awesome, unique birthday cake. I really hope you try making it at home. And if you do, please tag us at Dolled Up Desserts Baking if you post it on social media and we'll be happy to share it. Um, we love seeing your creations, especially if you've used our baking mixes to make them super simple and inclusive. And if you wanna give me a little birthday present, please hit that subscribe button and be sure to stay up to date with everything dolled up desserts. Imagine the taste of the most classic confetti vanilla birthday cake that you've ever had. This tastes exactly like that. It's so yummy. Thanks for watching.